Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to the Trust the Plan podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Jim. And Jim, I believe this is the Feel Good Edition. It's always a fan favorite. Yep, that's right. So, <laughs> you know, we just released the, uh, the much-anticipated uh, Evan Chop episode last week. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's been a fan favorite already. Has it? Yeah. The numbers look good, huh? Yeah. It's, a, good, it's a great topic. It is. It is. And I have to say, since Evan came on, I already saved... Like two hundred and forty dollars on uh, on the Delta Amex card with credits from Amex. Nice. One was for a hotel for two hundred. No, it was actually two hundred and ninety. Two fifty for a hotel credit, uh -huh. just booking it through Delta. Yeah. And we were gonna stay in the hotel anyway. In fact, we actually canceled a hotel room and then rebooked it through Delta <laughs> yeah. to get the credit. And you saved two fifty. Yeah. Nice. And then Campari's here in town, through the Resi, I think we were talking about. Resi, but I think it's actually Resi, R-E-S-Y. Okay. Yeah. On the Resi program is Campari's. And so if you use your your enrolled card at Campari's, you instantly get the $20 credit per month. Huh. So that's I've done that twice now. What a deal. I know. That's good. It's good stuff. It's excellent. Yeah. So <laughs> if you didn't see last week's episode with Evan, check it out. But today, Jim, mm -hmm. I want to talk about what the Wall Street Journal is calling the cash trap. Okay. So let's pull up this article here. The cash trap. Americans chasing high interest rates risk falling into a cash trap. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when we think of cash, we're thinking of money markets primarily. Yeah. Outside of the bank, of course. We think of money markets as the, the go-to vehicle for cash. Mm -hmm. Or some people are using T-bills outright. Um, but, you know, those are 30-day instruments. So they're short-term. Mm -hmm. um, so... The, the subtitle here is investors must decide whether to sit on their cash or redistribute it ahead of expected rate cuts. So let's break that down. Now, expected rate cuts. Mm -hmm. As of now, the market is anticipating one rate cut before the end of the year. Yeah. But guess what? It was the same thing at this time <laughs> last year. They were expecting yeah. one rate cut before the end of the year. And, and a few the following year. So we're obviously behind that pace already. Yeah, it wasn't long ago when they were expecting four rate cuts this year. Right. So here we are in in late June, and they're saying one rate cut, <clears throat> and you know it might it may or may not happen. Very true. So if there's no rate cuts, money markets are going to be sitting there at like five point one eight percent. And this is this is the crux of the article, right? Like, if I'm making my five point one eight, or T bills five point three five. Pretty fat and happy, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's <clears throat> why we've been talking about it for so long. Is it's a great place, you know, to put some money to earn a good rate on safe, you know, safe money. We're not exposed to volatility uh, on that, so that's exciting. So the money markets, I think most of us or most of you should be familiar with, but you know, since rates have been high for over a year now, we've been really taking a deep dive and saying, well. What's the be where's the best place to be? And we're in Michigan. We have a lot of clients in Michigan and Ohio, for instance, where the state tax rate is 4 or 5%. And what's interesting is that the t Treasury bills, T bills, if you, if you ignore the money market and just go right to the T bill, you're going to get a little higher rate because you're avoiding the money market cost. Mm -hmm. But then you're also completely avoiding the state income tax. And so... If the money market yield is 5.18, mm -hmm. and it has some treasuries and some other things in there, so it's fully taxable, mm -hmm. versus a T-bill at 5.35, which is state tax-free, and if your state tax rate's four point something, you're actually getting an extra 0.2 yeah. tax equivalent yield. Mm -hmm. So it's like 5.55 versus 5.18. Right. And if you have a lot of money in that money market, maybe something to consider. Takes more work. Yeah. You know, you have to place trades. And, you know, back in the day, it used to be cost prohibitive mm -hmm. because, you know, like LPL would charge like $250 <clears throat> to buy a bond. Yeah. <laughs> Those days are over. Okay. It's, it's basically free. There's mm -hmm. no cost to, to buy a treasury. You can do it every month. Yeah. I guess the potential downside, right, is if, and we don't think that would happen, but if they started raising rates again, the value of that bond could potentially go down a little bit. 
small because it's a short-term instrument. But. So we just hold on for the for the remaining yeah. 25 days and we get par. Yeah. So I don't really worry about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, what I think it what I think about this article, and I think about this all the time. Question is, is the money market the best place to be, or T bills? Let's just call it cash. Mm -hmm. Is that the best place to be? Like I said, it, we're fat and happy making that. Mm -hmm. But what if, you know, we don't need that money for a long time? Yeah, I think, and I'm sure that's where the article's going, but you definitely have to be aware that it's not a long-term investment. You know, it's a short-term holding place, but looking at it as a long-term investment, I think you're, uh, you're setting yourself up for some disappointment. And as this chart shows, we've, have, we've got over $6 trillion in money market funds, which is basically double where we were 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are in this trade right now, okay? Mm -hmm. My argument is, we only need this money in money markets and T-bills if we are using it for our emergency fund or if we are using it for a specific goal, maybe one or two years out. Mm -hmm. For instance, a new car, a new house, uh, college money that you need, or the next year or two of retirement needs, right? right. Yep. Otherwise, I think that what, what's going to happen is the Fed's going to start cutting, you know, maybe at the end of the year or next year, all of a sudden, we're going to wake up and these rates are going to be back at 3% mm -hmm. instead of 5 point something. Yeah. And when that happens, we're going to be less excited about the money markets. Mm -hmm. And we're probably going to be <clears throat> regretting the fact that we didn't have the money in longer term bonds. Right. Because we're going to miss the, the price appreciation on those bonds. Yep. That, and, that, yeah. and that's what JP Morgan is calling the cash trap. Okay. Okay. So... You know, if you've owned cash over the last year and a half, you've you've been great, but but that's the rear view mirror. Yeah. So looking forward, what if what if I told you if you bought intermediate or longer term bonds, you can make more than five point one eight percent, and when rates do go down, mm -hmm. you have ca capital appreciation. Yeah. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. What if I told you that if the yield is larger than five point one eight, that's your expected return for the next five years. Well, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. We haven't been able to say that very much. Yeah. So if you have that a time horizon that, you know, can accommodate five years or so, you know, that I think you definitely want to start thinking about taking that extra step. This is well said here from Vanguard. Long term investors should return to a diversified bond portfolio so they can lock in these attractive long term yields before the Fed starts cutting rates. That's the, the gist of my argument. Mm -hmm. Unless you need that money. In, in the very short term, we should think about locking in these higher rates for longer. Yeah, because I think that's, I mean, that's the trap, is that if we just keep being comfortable, eventually they're going to start cutting those rates. And like you said, we're going to wake up one day and be in the threes and go, how did that happen? And all the while, we just missed some price appreciation on the bonds and could have locked in a five. So I think it's great. So with that said, if you have a lot of money in the bank paying 0 0.05, a money market would be a great place to consider We'd be happy to help you with that. If you have too much money in the money market and you're thinking about uh, long-term investment plans, we can help you with that as well. So uh, if you enjoy what we're talking about here, please uh, watch on YouTube, ring the bell, subscribe, mm -hmm. like, share. We'd be grateful if you do that. And if you're interested in speaking further, you can uh, sign up for an appointment at peakwm.com.